RGeek's top cover with holes mini ITX HDPC case. With a screwdriver, counterclockwise the two screws that holds the top cover. Remove the top cover. Counterclockwise the four screws to remove the storage panel. This particular screwdriver magnetizes easily. My apology for the delays. Remove the bag within the case. This contains the necessary screws like to install the motherboard. Remove the front panel wires. Counterclockwise the two screws to remove the push button power switch. The I.O. shield. Install the I.O. shield to the case. I had major problems with the motherboard not aligning with the motherboard standoffs, so I used an angle gripper to pull all four edges of the I.O. shield until I was able to install the motherboard. Gigabyte's B360N Wi-Fi Mini ITX LGA 1151 motherboard. Flip over the motherboard which the N2 socket is underneath. Inland's Professional 256 Solid State Drive NVMe M2 PCIe. Counterclockwise to uninstall the M2 screw. Install the M2 Solid State Drive to M2 Socket 3 connector. Clockwise the M2 screw to finish installing the M2 solid state drive. Now align the motherboard with the standoffs and the IO shield. It will be not in exact alignment, which is okay as long as it is close enough. Obviously, this requires some gentle force against the side of the motherboard. Now installing the motherboard with 4 screws total. This is optional, but I'm combining acrylic washers with the screws. Remember to adjust the motherboard to try to align with the standoffs. Clockwise each screw. Do not fully install each screw until all four screws are on the standoffs.
I do admit this case is very lightweight. Try your best to not move it around. This motherboard hole is the tightest space. Be patient with yourself here. Now reinstall the push button power switch within the case. Remember, clockwise the two screws. I'll intentionally show what an overdone torque does. It will not be able to properly push the button if over torque the screws. See? I am not able to push the button down. I need to slightly loosen the screws. Correcting the torque takes adjustments and testing each button press until here the click. Intel's Pentium Gold G5400 dual core at 3.7 GHz. Now to install the CPU, push down the lever and move it to the side, then pull the lever up, including the metal cover. Align the CPU's two notches with the alignment keys, and align the CPU's triangle pin 1 to the pin 1 corner, also known as the triangle. This is optional, but remove the socket cover ahead of time. Return the latch and the metal cover to finish installing the CPU. Rosewheel's RCX Z775 LP sleeve bearing with pre-applied thermal paste. See the four holes around the CPU socket? Align the CPU cooler's four pins with those four holes. When ready, push down each pin like an X. Now connect the 4-pin CPU fan connector to CPU fan. Anata's XPG Gammix D10 2x4GB at 2666 MHz. Push down each latch for DDR41 and DDR42. Align each RAM with a dim slot and from each RAM's edge push it down. Should hear a click or until it feels secure, do make sure the RAM is fully in.
Reconnect the front panel wires to the push button power switch. The power LED and the power switch. Connect the power LED to PLED positive and negative and connect the power switch to PW positive and negative. The Pico PSU's 160XT. Connect the 24 pin Pico PSU to ATX. Connect the Pico PSU's 4 pin to ATX 12V. The hex nut and washer for the Pico PSU. Combine the power connector in the case with the washer and secure it with the hex nut. Normally the washer is behind the nut. For some reason mine was loose so this was why I placed mine inside the case. There are only two holes that will fit, left or center. You decide where you want the AC wire to be placed. My placement was at the left side. Connect an HDMI cable to the motherboard's HDMI port. Finish connecting the HDMI cable to a monitor or a TV. Connect the AC-DC power cable to the monitor or TV. Connect a USB to one of the motherboard's USB ports for a keyboard and mouse. The AC-DC 144W power adapter, also known as BRIC. Connect the power adapter to the DC in 2.5mm 12V. Connect the power adapter and AC cable to a power surge, or an outlet, or a UPS. Turn on the power surge or the UPS. Press the power button to turn on the computer. As seen here, this successfully powers on and displays reboot and select proper boot device message, meaning this is a good sign that passes post. Press the power button to turn off the computer. Also disconnect the power adapter AC cable in the peripherals. The 3.0 USB cable. Connect the 3.0 USB to FUSB 3.0. Reinstall the storage panel that came with the four screws. You may need to gently bend the 3.0 USB cable ahead of time to make this easier. Remember, it's clockwise when reinstalling the screws.
The last component to reinstall is the top cover for the case. Slide the top cover in first while aligning the edge with the back holes. Clockwise the two screws that came with the top cover. This is not the original Wi-Fi antenna that Gigabyte provides for their motherboards, so I purchased two antennas that support 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. This is one of the risks when purchasing a used motherboard, but there are ways to resolve missing parts. Clockwise each Wi-Fi antenna until it feels secure. You can adjust the angle of the antennas at any time and what works best, depending upon the computer's location and with the USB connections. Reconnect the monitor and the peripheral cables. Press the power button to test the computer again. It's ready to install an operating system like Windows 10. And this completes building a mini PC. Thanks for watching!